Hi, welcome back. And today, uh, let us look at what is called an ether channel. So in this lab, we are going to configure an ether channel. So we're going to understand what is an ether channel and why do we need an ether channel in our network. So an ether channel is just a Cisco uh, port channeling protocol. So uh, let's set our, our topology first so that while I'm explaining it to you, you understand it from the topology. So we're going to here to pick our switches here. To come to switch, uh, I'm going to pick uh, this switch here. This layer three switch. And also those are the, that other switch. Then we're going to uh, give it to gigabit ethernet. So gigabit ethernet uh, one. Set another gigabit ethernet two. So, uh, you know that in our today's network, we have got multiple links between the switches. This help uh, imp implement what is called redundancy and also resiliency in our network. So that in case some of the links go down, uh, some other links will be able to pick up the role of the link that has gone down automatic. So that we don't uh, experience a network. Uh, the, our network is always uh, up so that there's no any downtime in our network. So in this lab, actually, what we are going to configure is now the uh, the ether channel. So uh, actually, uh, where we have got uh, multiple physical links, like in this case, we have got two uh, physical links. That is gig one and gig two. STP will uh, will do its role by blocking some of the ports. So like in this case, STP has blocked this port here. Why does it block that port? This uh it blocked that part because it will help uh, prevent the loops in our network. Where we implement redundancy, also loops occur in our network. And when we have got loops, uh, there's broadcast storms. Which, uh, when there's broadcast storms, our network tends to uh, slow down because the network will be uh, will be experiencing loops over and over. So STP implement what is called a blocking. So where it will uh, will block this part. So. This one will act as our main as our main link. Then this downward will act as as the backup link. So that in case uh, the main link goes down, the backup link will turn into an up state. So it will change from blocking to uh, forwarding state. So that's uh, why we need a uh, STP in our network. But now, what challenging brings a uh, different uh, different advantages. That is. Uh, when you spot uh, channeling, uh, all the two multiple links, uh, all the multiple links will be bundled into one, uh, one link. So now, with all the links bundled into one link, now uh, STP won't do the work of blocking because now it's just one link. All the interfaces have been uh, bundled into one link. So STP and <coughs> layer three. One, we'll see all these links as one, as one logical link. That's what we'll call as ether channel. So the ether channel is bundling the multiple physical interfaces into one logical interface. Now Cisco, uh, we can bundle of up to eight uh, ports. Now, when you bundle all those ports, uh, there are things that you must make sure that they are 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 the same, are equal. So like. Uh, the speed must be the same from both uh, both both sides of the link. Also, we must ensure that I uh, use the same a uh, duplex. And thirdly, we must ensure that the VLAN configuration is the same on both uh, both sides of the link. So those are the three things that we need to note down: that the speed must be the same, uh, the duplex must be the same, and also the VLAN configuration on both uh, physical interface must be the same. So everything that I've explained here, uh, you are going to see it as we do our configuration. So we come here to this our switch. No. On this our switch, uh, in our previous uh, videos, we, we've known how you can configure a password on our switch. But in this practical, we're not going to configure password in those switch. So enable. So before you even continue, what we are going to do, 
we are going to uh, see the uh, spanning tree protocol uh, show spanning tree summary when you show spanning tree summary uh, you can see all the interface has been disabled show spanning tree vlan1 When you see uh, when you show spanning tree VLAN one, you see here we have got two interfaces, gig one and gig two, and both are designated. Uh, designated means that uh, both the interfaces are doing what is called forwarding. Both is forwarding. So gig one and gig two are both doing the forwarding states. That's why you see uh, both of them are, are are in a green, a green, the green. While on this other switch, let's uh, do the same. Enable. So on that switch, uh, show a uh, spanning tree villain uh, one. When you do a spanning tree villain one, you see here gig one uh, is a root port, a root port, and now and gig two is an alternate port. So that's a uh, gig two. Once the root ports go down goes down the root port is in a forwarding state while the alternate port is in a blocking state as you can see here blocking while this one is in a forwarding state so once the root port goes down the alternate port will take over the role of the root port so it will do it will do the forwarding of of the frames that one was about the uh, stp the spanning tree protocol but in this our lab we want to implement now the ether channel we see how uh, the interface being bundled together so that we see it as one logical interface so that we don't uh, see the role of stp now so we get into that our switch so i uh, enter the configuration terminal config terminal on the configuration terminal, we are going to uh, enter the range of interfaces while on this, so we will be range from 1 to uh, 2. So interface uh, range gig uh, 0 slash 1 to 2. And that, uh, on that interface, uh, we are going to tell it switch port trunk encapsulation here will be dot one q then uh, tell it switch port to be a trunk like we said uh should be the same duplex so switch port trunk switch port uh, mode here is trunk now then after that we configure what is called at uh, the channel group now channel Channel group is when you question, you can see the group range from a uh, one to a uh, forty-eight. So you choose the a uh, number from one to forty-eight. So channel group here a uh, one. Then mode when you look at mode here, we have got multi active, auto, desirable on and passive so how will you how will you know that which one to select like for the one active active and uh, passive this one are used for the lsp so that is the ls while while the desirable and auto this one are used for the cisco that is the link aggregation uh, protocol so we have got different modes of negotiation so these two uh, switches will implement what is called a uh, packet negotiation. So they will negotiate. So there are different uh, way in which you can configure. That is the uh, a port aggregation protocol. That is for the Cisco pro uh, proprietary. While we have got also the link aggregation control protocol. That is for the IEEE 802.3 AD. That is the one that is used for uh, non-proprietary uh, uh, vendors. So any vendor can use uh, 
LSP mo LSP modes. While but for Cisco we use uh, the port aggregation control protocol. So well you, you want you are in a Cisco environment, so we will specify it as a mode as auto or desirable. But when when you want to use a multi vendor, that is like uh, any organization can use any vendor can use uh, active and and the passive one. So we are going to use the active. So you, you need also to know the difference between active and also the active and also the passive. So while the passive, it only receives the LSEP packet, but it doesn't re re reply uh, to any uh, uh, negotiation packets. While with the active, uh, it negotiates uh, the packets, uh, does what's called negotiation. So that's how how you need to uh, what you need to understand about the uh, the mods uh, why uh, and which one under which circumstances you use the Cisco and which circumstances you use the LSCP mods. So, but uh, all work in the same. Whether you use the Cisco, all works in the same. You can use both in this packet tracer. So it's upon you which one you choose. In this my case, I will use. I will be using the LSCP mode. Like here, I've used the channel group to be uh, active. So after that, you exit. Once you exit, we are now going to create a, a, a port channel, the interface into which we are going to bundle the, the physical port. So we create interface, a port channel. The, the, the group, uh, the, the channel number must be the same as the group that we created up there. So the group, we created group number one, so channel one. On that, you also, we are going to give it a switch port, a trunk, encapsulation here will be dot one Q. Then a uh, switch port uh, mode here will be trunk. Then we are going to tell uh, that uh, that trunk to allow specific VLANs. So allow specific VLANs. So switch port uh, trunk allow uh, VLAN one, two, and three. So like we said, the same thing we configure on this switch are the same thing that should configure on the on the other switch. All the configuration might be the same, the VLAN, the duplex mode, and also uh, the speed rate. So we are on this uh, on this other switch number two here. Let's give it a name. Uh, so config uh, terminal. So host name here will be uh, switch two. Go back to this and give it host name of switch one. Exit. Exit again. So config. Okay. So host name here will be switch one. So while before we configure the ether channel, you still uh, see this uh, this part here is still in. A blocking state. So we go to uh, that other switch. So right interface range. So interface uh, range here will be gig zero slash one uh, to two. Then uh, switch port here trunk and uh will be dot one Q. Then uh, switch port here. This is a mode here will be trunk. After that, we are going now to create a, a channel group. So channel channel group one mode here will be active. After that, I want you to see as it happens. So let's push this one, this other side. So channel now we are going to create now after that we create what is called a port a interface port channel. So interface 
where we are going to bundle the physical interface so interface port a channel they say the, the the number must be the same as the group so after that tell it switch port uh, a trunk then encapsulation here will be dot one q now switch port here trunk switch port mode uh, to be trunk after that i will give it the villains that we are required to uh, uh, allow to pass so switch port trunk allowed villain one two three that uh, we exit so we see the interface is still uh, negotiating so now after the after it has negotiated the lsp packets you will see all these interfaces will turn to green from yellow to green so let's just give it time and see as it process that you see now all the interfaces has turned to a uh, green uh, now uh, uh L, the stp and the layer 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 3 uh, protocols will treat uh, all these uh, physical interfaces as one one logical interface that's not, that's uh, why all the interfaces are in the app there's no interface that is in a blocking set so after that we want to uh, do some of the we want to do some of the verification commands so I uh, do show do show it's a channel do show it a channel port a channel when you use that command do show it a channel port channel you can see here <coughs> Uh, uh this is a primary aggregator now the protocol here we are going we are using a uh, lscp like i said uh, we are using lscp and uh, the interfaces here we are gig one that is active and also gig number two uh that is also in an active state come back to this our exit exit So uh show show it a channel uh port channel and look at uh you show that you can see the same gig one and gig two are both in uh active active state also show <coughs> it a channel summary when you show it a channel summary here you see here uh, the interface here now the group is group one uh, the ports are uh, the the port channel here then protocol here is LSCP then the interface that has been uh, bundled into that logical interface are gig one and gig two so I believe uh, all what we needed has been implemented so now you now know the uh, the reason why we need uh ether channel in our network so know that ether channel is a cisco port channeling protocol and we need to know that uh lscp is a non-vendor uh, is a non-vendor proprietary while the ls while the port aggregation protocol is a vendor specific that is a cisco a Cisco protocol that is used in a Cisco environment. So thank you guys. I believe you understand every bit of uh, what I've explained in this practical. In case you have a question, just uh, feel free to ask me in the uh, comment section and I'll be able to respond to you. And if you have a task that you need to be helped to uh, tackle, I can also help you tackle. Just uh, hit me in the comment section and I'll be able to reach you. So thank you and let's meet in our next uh, video uh, tutorial.